Joining me to discuss this and more is Sophie Ellsworth of The Australian. Sophie, I don't know if you've seen this picture doing the rounds on social media. It's of Jesus dressed as a Hamas terrorist, suggesting that if Jesus was around, he'd be fighting against the Israelis. What's interesting to me is that if anyone dared to draw a picture of Muhammad, well, you just wouldn't, would you? So it's not only historically inaccurate, and it's not only the appropriation of a religious figure, but just the sheer hypocrisy of it. Oh, look, James, great to be with you tonight. Look, I thought Christmas was off limits. I thought this time of year was pretty sacred uh, and it didn't need to be weaponized like this. I have seen that imagery uh, going around on social media, which I think is really disappointing. And just what you said in your editorial, the goings on uh, in the lead up to Christmas, the weaponizing of Christmas, uh, making this, you know, a, a political game, really, uh, I think is really disgraceful. And it, it should be such a special time for so many people around the world to be putting up these sort of images at this time of year, I think is pretty offensive to a lot of people, James, and it's totally unacceptable, whatever your views are when it comes to religion. Yeah, absolutely. And um, speaking of Christmas protests, the fallout from the Carols by Candlelight protest continues uh, with police now investigating whether or not the anti-Israel activists who get up on stage during the Melbourne Carols performance may have had inside help to get on stage. Now, the Australian newspaper that you write for reported today that insiders have asked why strict control of the event for participants didn't seem to have been applied to the protesters. Sophie, that's a worrying accusation, isn't it? Well, James, let's just be clear here. It's an accusation at this point, so we don't know yet. But uh, I was looking up tonight what you can actually take into the carols. You cannot even take an esky into the carols without getting that stripped off you. There's very tight controls when you go to these events, which a lot of us understand and accept now. You cannot take weapons. Now, uh, one of these uh, people who disrupted the carols that night had some sort of weapon with them but police have not said publicly what it is so i wonder how did they get there on stage uh so close to the host there uh, are people will be asking these questions james and also the fact that david campbell the host said let them along the lines of let them have their moment is he for real i thought this was really alarming uh because if this was the israeli side uh carrying on like this i think they would be largely condemned so let's see what comes of this but i think it's very concerning if these accusations do come out to be true that there was help yeah, well, police are investigating those suggestions and uh, with others calling for more protests and disruptions, gee, you'd hate to think that events like this will continue to be hijacked. Just on the host of the carols, uh, who you mentioned just a moment ago, uh, David Campbell, um, you're right, he did say uh, everyone needs to have their moment, which was an extraordinary thing to say. And I, I want to show him some grace because, you know, when you're caught in a situation like that on the fly, um, you know, you, you, you react immediately and your words aren't always what you would say on reflection. But I was reminded of the head of ASIO who said just the other week that uh, Palestinian street marches were a pressure release valve um, in the event that something worse might happen. And we continually ask, why do these things happen? You know, you've got kids um, skipping school to protest against Israel. You've got um, all these other protests, motorcades through Jewish areas. We wonder why these things happen. Well, they keep being given permission to happen. If it's not the head of ASIO saying they're a pressure release valve, it's the host of Carol saying, well, everyone deserves their moment. Well, look, you're exactly right, James. Look, David Campbell was in a situation which if you or I are in, I don't know, I can't predict how I would react, but uh, I'm pretty sure if it was the shoe on the other foot, the reaction may have been quite different to this, James. So I think it's really concerning uh, that we're seeing this play out the way it has. And look, it happened during COVID. We saw lockdowns in Victoria. And, you yeah. know, basically when people wanted to march for Black Lives Matter, absolutely fine. If you wanted to protest against the lockdowns, absolutely not. I mean, this is double standards 
uh, that is just absurd. So I think people can see through this. Uh, and this is obviously such a heated debate. Uh, what is going on overseas? Everyone seems to have a view on it, whether they have knowledge or not. And I think it's really concerning uh, when it seems that one side of the argument is given a bit of, uh, you know, extra leeway here, shall you say. Another comment I wanted to ask you about from the Carol's host, David Campbell. Uh, he told the national television audience during the protest, well, we are in Melbourne, as if that explained the protest. Now, you're a Melbourne girl. What do you think he meant by that? Oh, look, I, I mean, I don't want to, uh, you know, try and uh, read his mind, but what is he saying that this is acceptable? Look, some pretty crazy stuff goes on in Melbourne. I don't think Melbourne is the city that it once was. Uh, it's a place a lot of us want to get out of at this time of the year. Uh, but when you see things like that unfold at what is meant to be such a special occasion, carols by candlelight, a celebration with very young children, uh, you know, ahead of Christmas, to be trashed like that and trashed on national TV is a disappointment for all, I think. Uh, well, Melbourne does have the AFL, so uh, there are some good redeeming qualities. <laughs> and you, of course, Sophie, for Melbourne. Let's Thank skip you, topics because the storms have been a huge issue, obviously, over Christmas. Uh, Gold Coast Mayor Tom Tate has criticised the Bureau of Meteorology for failing to warn people of the storm that destroyed houses and left 60,000 homes without power when it hit on Christmas night. Now, he says the Bureau sent people communication at 9pm warning that a wild storm would hit the Gold Coast at 8.45 p.m. We'll be talking to uh, um, BOM about um, what's going on regarding uh, warning because we can't warn people unless they gave us the data and uh, that part of it uh, is not good enough. What do you think about that for a lot of residents who didn't get that notice that this storm is going to hit? I think it's unforgivable. You know, so... We've got to sort it that it doesn't happen again. Now, this comes just days after the Bureau received criticism for failing to predict flooding in Cairns as a result of Cyclone Jasper. A lot of people find it difficult to understand how the Bureau can warn of sea level rises 100 years from now, but not a storm or flooding 24 hours in advance. Well, James, if I would to make light of a pretty serious situation, I'd say... I'll better late than never for sending out the alert. But what are these 1,500 Bureau of Meteorology staff doing? Now, they get over $400 million or around that annually from the government, from the taxpayers, to keep uh, them afloat. Now, a lot of their uh, people who work for them, the personnel I've been reading on this, have moved from regional locations into Brisbane. So that's probably completely useless they're not in these areas uh and they're hitting you know on their computer let's send out the alert when the storm's even gone i mean how ridiculous i think the bureau is under a lot of pressure now i did note the queensland premier coming out supporting them but look if you've got these situations coming james you want to know before they're coming you don't yeah. want to know once the storm's damaged your home getting an email or a text is completely and utterly useless